don't worry. I can take care of my kids. What if you have a daughter? I think people are surprised that I'm willing to say to this beautiful man, like, I'm not going to stand for your Like, I think people just think I should cook and clean for him because he's hot. <laughs> Everybody's like, wow, how did you end up with this young, beautiful, gorgeous, attractive, handsome man? So you're telling me that he's beautiful and handsome and you don't just sit at home and cook and clean for him all day? I've never heard of such a thing. People just think I should cook and clean for him because he's hot. <laughs> I don't think anybody has ever thought this or expressed this to Danielle. I think that this is what Danielle wants to think that everybody thinks. She wants us to be impressed that her relationship isn't one-sided just because her husband is younger than her. There's been a few times that she feels the need to randomly and weirdly mention how beautiful Johan is, which sounds fine, but you can tell that she only does it as a way to brag about being with somebody younger than her. Oh look, there's my beautiful husband, Johan. Have you guys all met my husband who's 10 years younger than me, Johan? I don't know who's been keeping up with all the Danielle drama, but to me, it seems like she really wants to think that Johan is trying to control her a lot more than he actually is. And believe me, Johan is not perfect. But it was pretty funny to see Danielle pull a surprise Pikachu face when everybody took Johan's side on the tell-all. But anyway, we'll get to that later. Or we won't. I don't know. I'm just gonna... The tell-all just happened. So I'm just gonna talk for like 20 minutes. Ah, Nicole and Mahmoud. They're a couple. They basically just argued about clothes the whole season. He's like, you better wear this. And she, she's like, no, I don't, I don't think so. And he goes, okay, well, then we're gonna get to get a divorce. And she says, well, I hate it here, so that's fine with me. And that's that's it. That's what happened, actually. I didn't even... I was going to say that's the summary of what happened, but that actually is what happened. I didn't skip over anything. There's nothing you missed. Uh, Chris and Jamie. Now, this was a dumpster fire. Well, it was more like flash paper. It just went up in flames and disappeared before anybody even knew what the hell happened. This relationship is over faster than Asuelu can run when he's trying to avoid his own son's birthday party. Here's what happened. Chris, on the left, is from America, and she met Jamie, on the right, who lives in Colombia and is from Venezuela. Even though they had never met in person before, Chris moved down there to get married and live there permanently. She went there, bought a knife, got married, and then told Jamie she had to go back to America because somebody stole a motorcycle from her that's worth $50,000 and she had to go to court. So she goes back and stays for five months. At one point she said she went back to get her narcolepsy medication and then she said she had to help out her son and she had family problems and then she had to work. Jamie would call her up and be like, hey, uh, where are you? Why are you still in America? It's been like five months now. And Chris would be like, Hey, I'm over here working my ass off for you. I'm sending you money. Uh, you should be thanking me. And all you have to do is complain. You know what? I'm going to go crash my car and kick in some random person's front door. And you're all caught up. That's, that's everything. All right. It is time to move on over to Nicole and Mahmoud. Nicole and Mahmoud. Ah, I think I mentioned last time that Tim is here for some reason. He's the designated pillow talker. What the hell? He's trying to like take over the whole show and I'm not really for it because he wants Sean's position. They hate each other and they're never gonna be right. Like, come on. Imagine if they released 90 Day Just Tim and it's just all the Tim moments. But I don't mean like the Tim scenes. I mean only the frames that contain Tim. Now, the last time we saw you two, you were discussing moving back to America and bringing Mahmoud over here to the States. Congratulations. Yes. So that's going to happen. Congratulations. Uh, so, Mahmoud, how are you feeling about coming over to the States any day now? I'm so happy about that. You don't seem really happy. Here's a little secret. These two are a terrible couple. But I guess if you just think life is too easy and you want the most difficult, frustrating marriage for no reason whatsoever, then maybe it's a good idea if you like a good challenge, you know? They both cranked up the difficulty to expert and then decided to have a camera crew follow them. So, Nicole, you're living in Los Angeles right now. Why didn't you just wait until Mahmoud got his spousal visa? I wanted to be stable and that way then when he gets here, I can help him. So you're going to be supporting the both of you? Initially, I will I will be, yes. Whew, he's probably not going to like that. And I can tell because he has a look on his face that says, I'm probably not going to like that. Everybody remembers Andre, right? Well, the dude nearly lost his mind because his wife was out making the money while he was at home with the kids. And he's like, how can I make money while taking care of my kids? So he decided to start a, a kid's channel on YouTube, like a kid's vlog, family, running around, pretending to be happy. One of those, one of those deals, you know? He, he did that. That's not a joke, actually. He really did do that. Look it up. Mahmoud, would that make you uncomfortable if she is making all the money? Mm. She is my wife. Like, even if I don't like that, we are one, not two person. 
Hmm, very nice. Hmm, I don't know if I quite believe that. What do you think? He could take Andre's advice and just yell and swear at everybody until they go away. I want to go back. You asked Nicole to marry you after just a week of knowing her in person, right? About a week. About like a week. Approximately one week or so. Oh, huh. I wonder why it was a catastrophic nightmare. Here's the thing. They had met and were married before the season even started. She actually had tried living over there for at least a month or two. I forget. And when I say over there, I mean in Egypt where he lives. It didn't work out and she said she didn't like it at all. So she moved back to America only to decide to move back again and give it another try without actually changing anything. Well, I guess the one difference is that there's a camera crew following them around. And at the end of their relationship, Tim is going to come out and judge. So in seven days, there must have been some sparks of flying. <laughs> you know, when I look back at that time, it's like, I would never have done that, like, ever, ever. And so uh, to look back and... Oh, that's always a good sign that the marriage is working. When you look back on it and think, how would I, how did I do that? Why would I ever do this? It's always weird to hear people say, I would never have done that when it's something they already have done. But listen, I get it. She got all caught up in the moment and she thought she was in love and she got married. But now what do you do? I mean, it's cool. She was living in Egypt. She was taking a yoga class in a pyramid. That's, that's awesome. But then she had to go home and live with Mahmoud. It would only be with him that I would do something like that. Now, Nicole, you converted to Islam just two days before the wedding. So I feel like if you're going to convert to another religion, it should be because you actually believe in that religion, not just because you met somebody and three days later you want to get married. In my opinion, all that says is you actually don't take the religion seriously because you just decided within three days you want to join it. Did you think that you really understood the concepts of the religion? at that time? Um, uh, I don't know. I don't know if I fully understood. I, I didn't, there was a lot I didn't know and I went like head first. Well, at least she's being honest about it. I think she just got overwhelmed with all these good feelings and wanted to dive into something really drastic right away. But come on, it doesn't need to be so serious immediately. Like just grab a soda pop and go to the movies, get to know each other for more than a week. I understand that you probably need a much stricter plan if you're from separate countries, but still. Was that your preference, Mahmoud, that she converted before you got married? We talk about that and they I told her here, if you want to be Muslim, it's back to you. But like my kids going to be Muslim. What happens if your child doesn't want to be Muslim? Boy, did it just get awkward in here, huh? It's funny that they're even talking about this when they have a million other problems. Like, please do not have a kid. He wants to raise his child to be Muslim, and she doesn't want to do that at all. So I have no idea why either of them would want to agree to get married. There's plenty of things that you can disagree on, and then there's some things that you really can't disagree on. You need to be on the same page about some things. Of course they will be. I will teach them how to be. Don't well, what if they that. don't want to? Because America, it, it's, it's a free don't country. Worry, don't worry, don't worry, don't worry. I can't take care of my kids. What if you have a daughter? Are you gonna force her to wear the hijab and everything? Look at the absolute dread in her face knowing that this conversation is happening right now. It really doesn't matter what your opinion on any of this is. Mahmoud simply cannot handle a mature debate about this. We not force anybody to do anything. But then why do you force her to change the way she dresses? Uh, I'm her husband and she's between here and me. It's not your business. Oh. Uh. Oh, my whole tiny buns. Everybody's always like, it's not your business. But you know what? You're sitting here on a screen on a reality TV show with an earpiece in, ready to answer questions about your personal life. Like, they're all here to give opinions about each other. I'm not exactly sure what he expected. Now, can you tell that Gabriel is a little bit fired up about this? Yes. But has he said anything out of line? I don't I don't think so. I told you this is going to be between me and here. We will talk. So basically, you're going to was... talk to her Listen in to me. private. Listen to me. So we will she talk doesn't. Uh, between... yeah. I will talk with my wife about that and we will find if she can do that or not. You can tell based on her reaction that she's dealt with this before and she knows exactly what's coming. It seems that if Mahmoud is questioned in any way, he gets very frustrated very quickly. What, are, bro, you literally force her to do everything. You suppress her in like behind oh, closed shit. doors. So don't even say you don't force her to do anything because you do. You sound like an idiot. Like. Honey, it's okay. It's okay. I'm not a fan of Mahmoud, but yeah, this is certainly not how you're going to change his mind. What they need is Tim. Where did he go? They got to bring him back out. He'll he'll definitely get through to Mahmoud. I'm you're dumb sweetheart. Just tell you're your I'm done. When he's challenged, he walks away. Shut up, ass.
That took like two seconds before he lost his cool. He could have just confidently and calmly answered the questions and explained from his perspective and made Gabriel look like the rude one, but no, instead he decided to do this. I think you can see that it's, it's a great challenge for me, right? It's too much of a challenge, okay? It's too much. There are some challenges that just aren't worth it. You remember the milk crate challenge? That was like a thing for a little short while. This is the milk crate challenge of marriages. The reward is virtually nothing, whereas the risk is incredibly high. Um, okay, Nicole, can you step off and just check in on Mahmoud? Okay, I'll be thank right you. Back. Thank you. Good luck. Okay. Hopefully she can get him back. So, do you think she can get him back? Even though everybody here is against him, do you think he'll come back? Or, or, do you think he'll just turn on her and start yelling at her? You know, I found that very triggering because I feel like I have a lot of similar experiences. And I think with that- With Johan. With Johan, for sure. I think that- All right, that, that's enough. Maybe if somebody else was saying this, I would actually sit and listen, but everything with Danielle is just I, I, me, me, me. Even when it seems like she's saying something that should be helpful, it still feels like it's about her and it's about the way that she knows how to do something that you don't. <laughs> Nobody tells me how to raise my kids, okay? Dude, you don't even have kids yet. Like, settle down, jeez. It'd be one thing if he already had children and was raising them and Gabriel was, like, telling him how to raise his kids or something, but I don't know. I feel like it's different when you're talking about your hypothetical kids that you're probably not even gonna have. Okay. I'm so sorry that that happened, sweetheart. I never told him that before. I understand. You know what's important here, honey? Is that you tell I mean, your truth. So, what just happened today is like, they are stop. Tell him stop being mean to me. I love how that's what it ends up boiling down to. Tell him to stop being mean to me. He's in there being a great big meanie. Nicole, he said, I don't know how to raise kids. I think they're just kind of curious. Like, they just kind of wonder, you know, what, what that would be like, right? They're just asking He's questions. Just saying, oh, you're going to force your kids? You're going to force your kids? So introducing your children to the religion that you follow is a relatively standard thing in any religion, in any culture in the entire world. The fact that he would get so fired up about someone criticizing him for that is ridiculous. I think completely separate from culture, separate from religion, this guy just cannot handle his ideas being challenged. I'm so sorry that, that this has put you in such a terrible mood. I really am. A terrible mock mood, am I right? <laughs> Hey, all right, you know what? I actually, I, I like his name. I think it's a cool name. It's, it's the best thing about him is his name. I need you to be here with me, my love. Be strong. I'm strong because I will be mean to everybody and it's just, I don't want to do that anymore. <laughs> Yeah, that's very indicative of a strong person, pouting and stamping your foot like a toddler. I'm very strong, okay? I'm gonna go back in there and I'm be mean to all of them. There are a bunch of big, fat, dumb, stupid doo-doo heads in there. I know, I know. Uh, you even not support me. Like I'm trying to support you. I don't see that even once. What is he talking about? That's pretty much all I've ever seen her do is try to be supportive. This entire time that he's been flipping out, all she's doing is saying that she understands and trying to be there for him. I have absolutely no clue why she continues to put up with him at this point. With this guy, what he said, I'm sorry, honey. I can't control what comes out of the mouths of other people. Well, you're gonna have to learn because this is unacceptable. It is unacceptable to see you sit there while he said those things. You have to dogpile with me, all right? That's true love. If I call him an asshole, you call him an asshole. Better yet, you call him a piece of shit. That's support. Okay, but so we have to f them together. Controlling what I'm going to say to, to f this Damn, I just realized I compared this guy to Andre earlier, and that is very accurate. He's actually giving him a run for his money when it comes to yelling and swearing and storming out of places. Now, it's too bad that you can't become professionals at yelling and screaming and storming out of places, because these two would be at the top. Okay, where's he are? Where are you, my love? I'm the camera now. She always sounds so kind. It's crazy hearing the juxtaposition between her saying, where are you, my love? And then him running around and flipping out and screaming and swearing and storming and running. I think Angela could really pound this guy into shape. Oh, could you imagine that? I would love to see that. Mahmoud and Angela together, that's the perfect match. They belong together. Eh, maybe he'll calm down. Maybe he'll prove everybody wrong. It's gonna be okay, Mahmoud. Mahmoud, uh, welcome back. I wanna see this ass walk. Oh wow, it's uh, it's great to have you back. Gabriel just throws down a Pokemon card and then Andre spawns, starts flipping out. The people who add in the bleeps would not be able to keep up. It would be impossible. Who's the ass? Probably me, because I yeah. asked him a question. Yeah. Shut up your mouth, ass. Yeah. Bum, bum, bum. 
Why are you crying now? Dude, why, why do you think? Oh my god. This is a clear sign that you're winning an argument right here. This is what you do. So she calmed him down. Well, I mean, as calm as he can get, I guess. And then convinced him to come back in. And he just ran back in and started yelling the same shit that he said before he left. I think we're stuck in a loop here. I don't know if we're gonna get out of this. She needs a hug, man. I just want the world to be a better place. We all try to understand each other a lot more. Shut up your mouth, ass. Bum, bum, bum. All right, that's enough. It's crazy what the tell-all has turned into. There were three episodes this time. In the last season, there were four episodes. And they even had a little backstage area where everybody could go and drink. So Big Ed would run back there and drink and then yell at Jovi. I can't even imagine what would have happened if they had done something like that for this season. I want to say sorry to everybody. It's okay. We appreciate that. Yeah. Shut up your mouth. <laughs> Alright, I'm sorry. I had to do that one more time. No, I guess it's cool that he apologized, though. Let's see what happens after this. Dude. Wow, ah. man. I don't know. This has completely changed, Veronica. Like, you went into this thing. I don't know, Veronica. This has completely changed. Uh... Banking on. After two walk-offs, fighting with all the certain people that I don't trust you being with. Isabel's coming across, like... A little all jealous. All my different club girlfriends, they will all tell me that their culture banking on. All right, I think that's enough, Tim, for today. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Just a quick reminder to check out the podcast if you're interested. We upload every single Thursday night. And also, consider heading on over to Patreon for bonus content. But either way, thank you all for watching. I hope you all have a wonderful night, and I'll see you in the next one. And she had never really struck me as that way. They, they feel, like, so like, secure super in their relationship. They are. But, like, this jealousy thing... I was a little controlling, like, you can't hang out with certain people that I don't trust you being with. You either trust someone or you don't. She strikes me as the type of girl that if he had a dream about another woman, she would be jealous. Yes. Like, <laughs>